We back with another one. Told you guys had a few videos, man, to keep it moving. Um, back with the boxing clinic, your boy CJ Goodfella. Um, thanks for everybody for subscribing. Uh, keep sharing the videos. Keep spreading the word. We working. Follow us at uh, the boxing clinic on Facebook as well. And um, you know it's interesting. Um, you know a little rumor going around. One of my guys said that um, you know Al Heyman passed up on a chance to um, broadcast the World Boxing Super Series tournament. Um, Richard Schaefer brought it to him to broadcast it on Showtime. Um, pretty much, you know, Al Heyman has control over Showtime, and they say Steven Espinosa does whatever Al Heyman says. And um, it's funny, you know, to start a video how people blame Al Heyman for everything. And, um, oh, Al Heyman, Al Heyman, Al Heyman. And at the end of the day, you know, he gives y'all guys a quality product now, and PBC is steadily improving. Um, but that's never here nor there. My whole point of it is if, you know, if Al and, and Richard Schaefer is beefing, why is Richard Schaefer uh, promoting one of the PBC cards featuring Leo Santa Cruz and Abner Mares October 14th on Fox? You know, it's, I, that's why I say that's, that's total bullshit. And, um, you know, and I think about it. You know, none of Al Hammond guys in this tournament, you know, the Darrell brothers didn't want to be in the tournament because they didn't want to go overseas after, you know, uh, Andre got fucked by Carl Froschman, he thought, and he thought, um, in, a, in the Super 6. So, uh, you know, I don't know why. Um, Al Heyman, you know, people didn't get in the tournament as far as David Benavidez. Um, Andrew Tabidi wanted to be in the tournament. He, you know, he didn't get in. So I don't understand that. But my my, my question is, you know, your guys can answer this. Um, you know, would the World Boxing Super Series tournament pull any ratings on Showtime? Um, and I say and I say that, and I'm going to get my opinion on that, and I say that from this standpoint, um, that any, any network it would have been on, I don't think it would have. Cruiserweights don't sell in America. Um, it's not a huge American, um, you know, weight class, um, you know, Holyfield fought there. Um, you know, uh, I think, uh, James Tony fought there as well, but it, it's always been a, a gateway to heavyweight. And a lot of people skipped over the cruiserweight class because it really has no, um, you know, it has no clout in America. Nobody really cares about the cruiserweights. They don't get on TV. It's a European based division. And so was, so was the super middleweight division, and it did turn. So potentially, you know, it can turn. But after all these years, it's just, it's just a division that uh, Americans pretty much jump over or just, you know, they just riding through. And the super middleweight division, uh, you know, it's, it's coming up. You know, it's getting more notoriety. It's getting more popular in America, especially after the super uh, middleweight super six uh, tournament as well. Um, but, you know, I don't think either one of these tournaments would have did <clears> – <throat> anything on us tv it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't worth it uh, most of these fights will be going on at 5 p.m eastern standard time in the middle of the day um i don't think any uh, american tv outlet would have bought it um it's just it was it was just a bad timing you know and we we see that earl smith and kill brook did yeah, terrible uh, numbers on showtime because of the time of the day clisco joshua failed to re reach a million on showtime because in the middle of the, it was in the middle of the day um and then you say 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You go uh, to the West Coast, uh, Pacific Standard Time. That's uh, you know, I think that's like what one, uh, two p.m. East, uh, Pacific Time. So yeah, it's just you know the timing is one of, you know one thing I question. And also you know the casual fan, you know they don't want to see that. You know they're not they're not gonna want to see you know a whole bunch of guys they don't know, a whole bunch of guys that don't speak. In, uh, I'm not gonna say they don't speak English, but they can't re relate to. It's one American fighter in this tournament, and it's Robert Brandt. And, you know, across the, across the casual fan base, nobody knows who uh, Robert Brandt is. And, and in some, you know, purist and hardcore circles, nobody know who knows who Robert Brandt is. Most people know that he trains with Derek James, who trains Earl Spencer, Jamel Charlo. Um, he's a power puncher, uh, came up through the amateurs. He's supposed to fight the Ryota and the damn winner. They got to do a rematch because of a controversial decision in the damn one. So, you know, one American in a tournament, and you want to put this um, tournament on US TV? It's not going to work, you know. And then the Americans not even going to have a home fight. And my whole my whole problem with this tournament was it didn't have any Americans in it, but Robert Brand. But they're fighting for the Amer for American Cup and Muhammad Ali Cup. And I, I felt like you know Sutherland and um, you know Richard Shaver didn't want an American guy in there. They didn't. There's no way Irish Mike Perez got in over Andrew Tabidi, you know. I just look at certain things like that. They didn't want Americans in here. They wanted to keep it a European base because last time, you know, Andre Ward dominated the tournament. They didn't want that to happen again. They want their guys to have uh, the easy road to to stardom and victory because they know 
you know, if you put, you know, uh, Americans in there, they're going to win it. I'm not saying that Tabidi would have won it because that would have been a tough task for him to ask. I think um, they protected Tabidi by uh, not putting him in that tournament, in my opinion. He got a lot of skill, but that's just my opinion on it. But as far as the super middleweight division, um, you know, David Benavidez would have been a good one. You know, Jesse Hart, but all those guys work with different promoters. Because if you have the perfect super middleweight um, um, super world boxing super series tournament, um, I, I say, you know, several of those guys wouldn't be in there. The guy from Sweden, the guy, the big Turkish guy wouldn't be in there. The guy that came down from uh, light heavyweight that just fought Nathan Cleverly wouldn't be in there. Robert Brandt wouldn't be in there. You know, a lot of those guys wouldn't be in there. The guy that, um, you know, Calvin Smith uh, fight fighting, he's terrible. He I just broke down tape on him. He wouldn't be in it. George Groves' opponent wouldn't be in it. Come on. You know, if you had the perfect one, it'd be James McGill. Uh, maybe your Darrell brother, David Benavidez, Jesse Hart, Gilberto Ramirez. A lot of those guys wouldn't be in there. So the, the number one super middleweight is not even in there. You know, you know whoever you want to say it is. Um, it's a bunch of uh, middle of the pack guys that's looking to be elite. Potentially Callum Smith that has piss poor um, resume. Chrissy Banks Jr. looking uh, to really uh, climb up the the uh, the ladder as well. And the cruiserweight is, is banging, but nobody pays attention to cruiserweight. So obviously, you know, this wasn't a, this wasn't, you know, fit for US TV um at all. Um neither one of them. Uh, too many foreign guys in there and too many foreign dates and places and at the end of the day, um nobody could re- could relate to to some of these guys and in the time slots, it, it just it just didn't make sense. You know, if it didn't money don't make money don't make sense. And it's only so many time slots that you have for each television network. So for Al Heyman to give up some of his time slots for a whole bunch of foreign guys that he doesn't have any uh, stock in or have any partnership with, it's just stupid. That's just my opinion. So let me know what y'all think. Would it would it did good on TV or not in U.S.? We gone.